Hello friends and welcome. My name is Gerald, Pastor Innovate Church in Kannapolis, North Carolina. So glad to have you along with us for our Sunday sermon. Today our topic is reconciliation as we continue to read and study God's Word, mostly looking at Jesus' own words here, the red letters as we like to call them. Looking at the Gospel according to Matthew right now, we are in Matthew chapter 5. If you want to flip there, whatever, go ahead. Uh, looking at Jesus' Sermon on the Mount currently, we've gone through the Beatitudes, we talked about salt and light, and now we are at the part where he has told the Pharisees and the scribes, you know, that he has not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. <clears throat> and in the law, he's speaking of the Bible or of the Old Testament they would have had, or primarily the first five books that Moses himself is, is had written and what they would have considered as the law and because there's 613 different laws found in those first five books and we looked last week and we talked about you know anger where jesus says if you have been angry with your brother then you are guilty of murder and we expounded on that feel free to go back and look at that sermon if you want but basically jesus is saying you know, on the surface the law says this but here it's really about this, and he goes deeper into it, and he strengthens the law almost. And so we're going to be looking at the second part of that same topic of being angry at your brother. And today it is about reconciliation, because he tells us to be reconciled before making a gift or an offering or sacrifice to God. And why? Why is that important? Why is it important that we be reconciled to those that we have wronged? So before we really jump in too deeply, let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we give you thanks and praise for this day, for this time together, Lord, for your word, for Jesus, and the way that he has expounded further on your law. And Lord, let us to let us have open ears and open hearts and open minds to hear what it is he is saying, to hear what it is you are saying today, Lord. And as I deliver these words, Father, I pray that they are yours and not mine, and I pray that you are honored and glorified by all that is said here today. For it is in Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. So I can remember, you know, I think I was in fourth grade, and me and this other kid got into it for I have no idea what reason. But... He, I think he pushed me, I pushed him, he punched me, I punched him. We went back and forth, and I just kind of remember waiting on the teacher to break us up because all we did is like I hit him in the chest, he hit me in the jaw. Who inflicted more damage there? Yeah, I was stupid on that one. But anyway, <laughs> hitting somebody in the chest doesn't really hurt that much like hitting somebody in the jaw. But anyway, I remember us going to the principal's office and really about time we got outside of the teacher's classroom or out of our classroom and on the way to the principal's office she sent us down there on her own didn't lead us or anything i remember me and him coming up with a plan of basically reconciliation before we ever got to the principal's office you know me and him had made up we had gotten over whatever our issue was and then became friends before we even got our punishment for the fight that we had just been in. So much so, I'd seen him later on in years. I had actually seen his brother before, or later on, as well as I was a young adult. No ill feelings there, you know, we reconciled all that. And so I, I tell you that story because that is honestly the way that we should allow things to roll off of us i do believe but too often we take things to the extreme and like i said last week we talked about jesus saying you know if you've been angry with your brother then you you're guilty of murder and the idea was being angry to the point that you could care less if a person lived or died or maybe even hope they would suffer because of whatever wrong they had done to you. And many of us have been guilty of that in our lives, I know. You know, and then we looked at James where he says, you know, 
I think it's James, maybe John, where he says that if you have hated your brother, then it's the same as murder. So you can kind of connect the two, anger and hate, and recognize, you know, that anger eventually becomes bitterness and hate as well. Well, today we're going to continue on in that section. We, we just stopped there last week. We're looking at uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 21 through 26. Last week we stopped after verse 22, but today we're going to continue on through it because not only are we not to be angry with someone, we are also to be reconciled with them. So again, Matthew chapter 5, verse 21 through 26, we're going to read the whole passage together. You have heard that it was said of those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you be put in prison. Truly, I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. So again, just like me and that young man, whenever we got in our little fight and our little battle, before we ever became or came in front of the, the judge, you know, we had made amends to one another. We had made reconciliation with one another so that we weren't in there pointing at the other one, accusing the other one, hoping that they would get in more trouble. And I, again, don't remember who started the fight, but I'm sure we both, if we'd have went down there angry at one another, we would have probably been blaming the other person for starting the fight and trying to make ourselves look good. And today's teaching, he says, so if you're offering a gift at the altar, remember... And there, remember that your brother has something against you. Too often, we are more concerned about us having something against someone else. But this puts the onus on us. Says if you remember someone might have something against you, then it is you. It is our responsibility to go and make it right before we even make our offering or give our gift to the church or to God. So I can't help but think how many of us, and I'm sure you know some of us, that we go to church on Sunday, on Wednesday, on any day that the church is open, our co-workers, our family, our friends know that we're going to be at church. They know that we claim to be saved, that we claim Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. But what happens whenever we're not at church and we're at work and we speak harshly or we are known for speaking harshly to our co-workers or we're known for being gossipers or we're known for spreading lies, or the things that we post on social media demeans or shows hatred towards someone else, or if they know that we have this division between us and someone else and because we're always talking about that person that has wronged us. Your divorcees are bad about that too. Bad about continually being angry at the person that calls the divorce. And there's some justification to that, don't get me wrong. But here Jesus puts the responsibility on us who are going to worship him to go and be reconciled before worshiping him. So what does it look like whenever we're going to church and we're holding this hatred 
this anger within us, but yet we're going to church claiming to be people of love. What are the unbelievers, the outside people of the church, what do they see us for? They see us as hypocrites. They see us as the judgmental Christians who go to church and preach one thing there, but then outside of the church, we live something differently. Jesus tells us to forgive lest we be forgiven. He tells us to be reconciled before we worship, before we bring something to the altar. For many of us, We think that because we are doing good, because we are going to church, because we are giving our offering, our tithes, that it makes up for wrongdoing against others. That it makes up for injustice that we may be responsible for. But it doesn't. You know, the Pharisees themselves, and that's you know, part of Jesus's audience here they were concerned with your attendance or with their attendance at the temple they were concerned with what people saw on the outside and the same went for the hating of a brother being angry at a brother and that's why jesus makes it tighter or strengthens the law because it's about the inward us you know, people can't always see our hate or our misdeeds just because we go to church. You know, they see us go into church. They don't know what we've done outside. But it looks good for us to step in the doors of the church or to have our attendance at church, right? It makes us look holy. And same thing with the Pharisees. All the outward law keeping that they did, you know, sure, they weren't responsible. We talked about it last week, you know, maybe they weren't responsible for a physical murder of someone, but yet they were guilty of hating. They were guilty of injustice in the classes of people. And when Jesus came and he's teaching this message that if you've been angry, with another then you're guilty of murder that made them look inside introspection of ourselves can be a dangerous thing because it reveals what is true about our heart and what is true or different between our inward being and our outward being one commentator says the Pharisees were intent only on the external act of worship. They looked not at all to the internal state of the mind. If a man conformed to the external rites of religion, however much envy and malice and secret hatred they may have, they thought he was doing well. But Jesus taught a different doctrine. It was more consequence to have the heart right than to perform the outward act. Too often we think that our sacrifices, that our giving, that our church attendance is more important to God than how we treat our neighbor, how we hold offense against our neighbor. 1 Samuel 15, 22 says, Has the Lord a great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to listen than that of the fat of rams. And Proverbs 21, 3 says, To do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. And then famously, Micah, small prophet, According to what we call them, we had big prophets and small prophets. And anyway, 
Micah 6, 8 says, Oh man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? So here's the deal. I'm not telling you not to go to church or not to attend church or not to worship God or to not get into his word and pray all these other sacrificial and offering things that we make to him. Those are good. Don't get me wrong. But don't do it knowing that you have hate within your heart for someone else. Or that you have wronged someone else. The Bible, Jesus tells us straight, leave your altar or leave your gift at the altar and be reconciled. Go make things right. And I know part of the other issue you may be questioning, well, does that mean that I need to be friends with the person? Maybe they've done something harmful to you. Forgiveness is our responsibility. The Bible tells us that we must forgive and it tells us to be peacemakers. And it says, as much as it is your responsibility to be a peacemaker, to live at peace with others, do your part. Paraphrasing James, I do believe. You can't make the other person forgive you. You can't make the other person change. But you, if you have wronged someone else, are responsible for confessing, for making it right as far as you are concerned. That part is on you. They don't have to respond. They don't have to try to become friends or you don't have to fully agree with being friends. But if you did something wrong to them, you need to make it right. If I've wronged someone, I pray that God brings it to mind and that I make it right. I've sought out people that I've wronged before in an attempt to make it right. It's what we all need to do. Imagine if the world itself, if all of us, sought to make our wrongs right with the other person. Friends, don't live with anger in your heart. Don't live with hate, with resentment in your heart towards someone else. It may take a move of God for you to release it, but you need to be doing everything you can, prayer and action, to make that happen. Pray for your enemy. And if you've got anger and you've got hate against someone, they're as good as your enemy. Pray for and do good to those that persecute you. Man, that's hard. I know. But God says, if someone has something against you, go and make it right before you come to him, before you come and bring your gift to him. Meaning, there's a huge priority on us to live at peace with our neighbor, to live at peace with our brother and sister. Such a high priority is that that God we were at war with him. We, were at, we are enemies of God if we do not believe, trust in, follow him. We as sinners are God's enemies. And even though it's not on God, he sent Jesus to make it right with us. He gave Jesus as that offering for us. Jesus is our offering for sin 
a covering, an atonement for sin so that we don't have to face the wrath of God because of our sinfulness. He gave Jesus as that sacrifice, as that offering for us. And then our part to be reconciled is repentance. Reparation. Make it right. Repent from our wrongdoing. Confess our sinfulness to God. And then receive His reconciliation with us. For Paul in Romans 5, and I'm just going to paraphrase some of his words here, makes it clear. We are justified by our faith in Jesus Christ. It says, because we've been justified by faith in Christ, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. That Christ died for the ungodly. You and I, without Christ, are ungodly. We are sinners. There's nothing good within us. It says, Christ died for the godly. And through his death on the cross, we are now reconciled with the one true, holy, righteous, perfect, pure God, the one that created us, the one that made us for relationship with him. And when we turned and went our own way, he gave of his only son for us so that we could be reconciled with Him. Friends, if God makes reconciliation with us that important, then you and I need to make sure we are reconciled with those that we have hurt, those that we feel anger toward, those that we hate. We need to do our part to make it right with them. Let us pray. Father God, I pray, Lord, that anyone, myself included, that has any anger against another, Lord, and I'm going to sit here and say whether that is a politician, whether that is a different class, a different race, whether that is a parent, an ex-spouse, a current spouse, a co-worker, a neighbor. Whatever anger and hate is within our hearts for these others, Lord, I pray that you remove it. I pray that you help us to release that angerness and that bitterness and that hate to you so that we can go and be reconciled with them, so that we can make it right as far as we are concerned. And then may we be at peace when we have done what we need to do in that relationship. And so that then we can come before you and make our offering, give our gift, worship you with a clean heart, with a pure mind, with love in our heart, not only for you, but for our neighbors. Father, don't allow your people to be a people of hate, a people of anger. Let your love shine through for the rest of the world to see. Let us not be people of division between denominations and between other believers. Let us not be people of division as far as political party, as far as income level, as far as color. Let us be people of love, of grace, of mercy. Because these are the things you have given us. 
help us to show those same characteristics to others. Because we and they both are made in your image. And if we are made in your image, we need to be lovers of people. Lovers of each other. Kind, slow to anger. Father, I pray you do that miraculous work within our hearts. And Lord, for anyone listening now that doesn't know your grace, your mercy, and your love for them, let them trust that you gave Christ to be that reconciliation between us and you, between them and you. And that gift is free for anyone and everyone that calls on your name. And from that moment on, let them walk in faith in you and in worship of you and allow you to be the Lord of their lives as you deserve. Father, again, I pray that you are honored and glorified by all that is said and done here today. For it is in Christ's holy name we do pray. Amen. Friends, as always, I pray it has been a blessing to you. I pray that God's word speaks to you today. And we would love to have you join us in our Facebook room, Red Letters Discussion, tonight at 6 o'clock. I'll post a link in the description of the video, so then all you got to do is click on it, and you get to discuss God's word that we've looked at today with us. As we'll go deeper into it, it's more like Bible study, except where we get to question and, and talk and discuss what it means to each other. As I want to know what it says to you. And what can I learn from how God is speaking through you? And also give a place for safe questions. What does it really mean for me to be reconciled with somebody that's hurt me? What does it mean for me to forgive someone? Friends, we're always here for you. If you need a prayer request, shoot it to us. Let us know. We'd love to pray for you. If you have a special need, let us know. Let us see if we can find a way to provide it for you. We want to be here for you. I pray that you have a great weekend, a great week, and know that God loves you. God bless.